Let's bring you the news update for the time right now. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control has reported 747 new cases of COVID-19, taking the country's total number of confirmed cases to 176,011. Lagos recorded the highest number of new cases with 488 new infections, followed by Akwaibom State with 121 new cases, while Oyo State reported 29 new cases. So far, 165,208 people have been discharged, while 2,167 people have, be, have died from COVID-19 complications. The Federal Executive, Executive Council has approved contracts for the rehabilitation of Wari and Kaduna refineries at a cost of $1.4 billion. The meeting was chaired by Vice President Yemi Oshibajo and the Minister of State for Petroleum, Timmy Priya Silva, told State House correspondent that $897 million has been earmarked for the Wari refinery and $586 million for Kaduna refinery. The Federal Executive Council also approved $2.76 billion acquisition of 20% minority stake by the NNPC in Dangote Petroleum and Petrochemical Refinery. It also approved the sum of $11.17 billion to link all of Nigeria's coastal cities by rail in six years. In reaction to the viral torture video, the Minister of State for Education, Chukameka Mwajuiba, uh, says that the federal government is concerned about kidnapped students by their abductors, and it reveals that there has been deliberate efforts to secure school premises across the country, and this has also contributed to a decline in cases of kidnap of students across the country. But he insists that the federal government is still making efforts to secure the release of the remaining students in captivity. Contracts for the rehabilitation of worry and Kaduna refineries to Mesa Saipem SPA and Saipem Contracting Limited at the combined total sum of 1.484 billion. 1.484 billion dollars. 897 million 678 1,800 U.S. dollars for worry refineries and 586,902,256 U.S. dollars for Kaduna refineries. We've made some recommendations and some work is being done. State commissioners have been empowered to implement some of them and the states have also taken major steps either in um, bringing uh, schools that are extremely at risk or those that are most vulnerable because we've done a security audit of almost all the schools, especially those that are not within, uh, those that fall within our, our suspect zones and then bring them into some sort of conformity with what the Federal Minister of Education has designed alongside with the security architecture of the country. After spending over a month in DSS custody, 12 aides of Sunday Adeyemo, uh, popularly known as Sunday Buhu, are set to be freed. Uh, this follows Justice Obiora Iguata's uh, ruling, granting them bail on the grounds that detention without charging them contravenes the provisions of the administration of criminal justice law and their fundamental rights. Judiciary correspondent Celestine Area has more on this report. After spending one month in custody of the DSS, these applicants will finally breathe the air of freedom. They were arrested on 2nd July after the Department of State Services in a joint operation with the Nigerian Army, but they the residents of Sunday Igboho in Oyo State, Ibadan. Mr. Igboho had escaped. The DSS had alleged that Mr. Igboho and his associates were stockpiling weapons and advocating for the Dodua Republic, a country for the Yoruba nation. These items were allegedly recovered from his residence during the raid. Seven AK-47 rifles, three pump action rifles, one stun gun, 212 life rounds of 55.65 mm ammunition, 1,295 life rounds of 7.62 ammunition, one jackknife, and 19 walking talkers. 
After spending over 20 days in detention, counsel to the applicant, Melumi Olajegbesi, had approached the court with an ex parte motion asking the court to compel the DSS to present the applicants in court. The court granted the order, but the order was not obeyed until 2nd August when the DSS brought only eight of the applicants to court. During this legal process, journalists were also caught in the fray, as DSS operatives tried to ensure that the applicants were shielded from the view of the cameras. Journalists were denied access to the courtroom to witness the proceedings. Some were handled and had their phones seized, which all resulted in a shouting match between journalists and the operatives. But all the drama that ensued at the first sitting was absent at the resume hearing. DSS operatives were strategically positioned around the Federal High Court. Journalists were screened and only those with the proof of identification were allowed to enter the courtroom. All 12 applicants were present in court. Judge Zobira, after taking arguments for and against the bail application filed by the applicants, admitted them to bail. The judge who held that there is no charge against the applicants admitted four of the applicants to bail in the sum of 10 million naira each with two shorties and like sum, while the remaining eight were granted bail in the sum of 5 million naira with one shorty each. One of the shorties the court held must be an employee of the federal government on grade level 12 and above. The shorties must be residents in Abuja and have properties, most what when are of means. We are actually here because of their liberty, and the court has granted them their liberty. So it does not matter um, what, what are the terms of um, the bill. What's important is that they have a granted bill. I was very, very glad about this. Counsel to the applicant, Melumi Olajek Basie, also noted that they would now be filing for a variation of the conditions, as the conditions given by Justice Obiera is very fair and not stringent. What is most important for the applicants now is how to meet up their bill conditions. Celestina Iria, CBC News, Abuja. Meanwhile, a high court sitting in Oyo State has granted an ex parte motion denying the Department of State Security and the Attorney General of the Federation from arresting and freezing the bank account of Sunday Adeyemo, also known as Sunday Buhu. Uh, Justice uh, Ladiro Akintola gave the order during a motion moved by his lawyer, uh, Yomi Aliu. Olaide Oyewole reports. Recent arrest and detention of the Yoruba Nation agitator Sunday Adeyemo, popularly known as Sunday Ibo by the Beninese authority, has continued to raise several questions in Nigeria. The activist had been accused of atrocities ranging from arms smuggling, inciting violence, and calling for secession from the Nigerian state. But a legal action was filed against the Department of State Security by counsel to Sunday Ibo for attacking and damaging his house, describing the invasion as unconstitutional. They had only 12 officers with him, 12 men with him. So they've exempted the 13th man who was a police escort to the man that they killed. You know, they thought they were killing Sunday Ibo. So they shot the man and killed him brutally. Even the cat, you could see the what, what we brought to court, a cat was shot, thinking that our client has turned to a cat. So we now came to court that the court should stop them from further infection of his house, molesting, arresting, or in any way tampering with his fundamental human rights, and <coughs> restraining them from blocking his account. The court graciously looked into the matter, looked at the exhibit, written support and affidavit, and has restrained the Attorney General Federation, the State Security Service, and the one that is here in Oyo State, the director of Oyo State Security Service, from arresting, molesting, or in any other way, breach the fundamental human rights of Chief Sunday Adiemo, a.k.a. Igbo Osa. Yomi Aliyu also expressed satisfaction in the court ruling. Now, it shows that the court is what the court is supposed to be, the hope of the masses, and that is what we have seen today. Meanwhile, the case between the both parties has been adjourned till the 18th of August. Olaide Oyewale, TVC News, Ibado. The crisis in the People's Democratic Party deepened on Wednesday with the member of the Board of Trustees, Senator Joy Modi, defecting to the All Progressives Congress. 
Chairman APC Ketika Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee and Yobe State Governor May Malabuni formally received the Senator in a brief ceremony in Abuja. Senator Modi described the APC leadership as sincerely and genuinely committed to a united Nigeria that has plans for the future generations. The legislator assured the party of her loyalty and her support to the party. Senator Modi's defection comes 24 hours after the resignation of seven national officers of the People's Democratic Party. And in reaction to the crisis, a PDP National Chairman Uche Sekondus has raised an alarm stating that a strong party chieftain is bent on hijacking the party structure. His special advisor on media, Ike Abonyi, revealed this in a statement. And the allegation against the faceless, strong chieftain of the PDP is coming amid the fresh crisis that hit the party as seven members of its National Executive Council resigned from their offices on Tuesday, citing bad treatment by the PDP National Chairman as reason for their action. Mr. Sekandos assures critical steps are being taken to ensure that the image and status of the party is not damaged by desperados.